Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the planning board meeting to order for, it, um, for May 2nd, 2023. My name is Carrie Marnack, chair of the planning board. Before we get started, I just need to read a few announcements here. This open meeting of the planning board is being conducted remotely pursuant to chapter two of the acts of 2023, an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency signed into law on March 29th, 2023. All members of the planning board are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The act allows the planning board to be entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. Members of the public who wish to view the live stream of this meeting may do so by going to Northborough Remote Meetings on YouTube via the link listed in the agenda. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. At this time, I will confirm board members and persons anticipated on the agenda are remotely present and can be heard by stating the following. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Bill Pierce? Here. Anthony Zeiton? Here. Amy Pretzky? Here. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Laurie Connors? Here. Fred Litchfield? Here. Great. Uh, ground rules for the meeting for presenters and applicants on the agenda. The chair will invite each speaker or applicant on the agenda by name to make a presentation and speak to their application. Participants will provide their full name and hold until their name is called. Each speaker will be asked to mute their phone or computer when not speaking and to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate meeting minutes. Those responding will be asked to wait until the floor is yielded to them by the chair. Speakers who wish to respond to comments of others do so through the chair, taking care to identify themselves. Each vote taken by the board or committee will be conducted by roll call vote. For public comment, after members have spoken, the chair will afford public comments as follows. By phone, dial star nine to raise your hand and wait to be recognized by the chair. Please note the party of phone number will be visible to those viewing the meeting. By Zoom, click raise hand on the bottom of your screen and wait to be recognized by the chair. The chair will ask members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses only. Once the chair has a list of all public commentators, the chair will call on each by name and afford only three minutes. We do not have executive session this evening. So with that, we will get started with our agenda. And first on the agenda tonight, we have the continued public hearing for 455 Whitney Street site plan approval and special permit for groundwater protection overlay district bylaw for the proposed addition of 4,500 square feet of warehouse space and associated improvement improvements. So why don't we bring in the right people for that? Let's see, who do we have? Would it be, looks like Merrick O'Connell, I assume. And I'm not sure who else. Good evening. Can Hi. You yeah, we can hear you. Is there anyone else on your team you wanna bring over from the? Chris from the engineering firm. I'm not sure what the name of his firm. Oh, yep, Chris Ryan. Okay. Yeah, Chris Ryan. Okay. Yeah, he's on here. Yep. Is there anything else, anyone else you wanted to bring on? No. Okay, great. So why don't we get started? I know um, last time we just briefly met, um, you had submitted a revised application, um, revised site plan um, for the board's consideration. And I think the board had a couple of questions that we provided to, I think it was Ben, was it Ben that came last time? Correct. Yep. Uh um, and we just asked a couple of questions that I think I think he was going to bring back to the team. So you're welcome to either start with if you want to answer any of those questions or you want to go and do a deeper review into the revised site plan. I'll leave it up to you to pick. Um, I, I'm we're open to whatever you guys want to do. So whatever, however you want to, whatever you want to do first is is up is good for us. Okay, board members, do what would you like? Would you want a quick overview of the site plan? I don't think we've seen the revised. Um, any sort of presentation would that be a good place to start for the board or sure, sure. okay yeah. how about that if you don't mind um, just the highlights from the site plan the revised site plan perhaps Chris should be the one speaking for that Please. sure Chris is there are you able to share your screen um, I am does it allow me to do I have the ability to share um, I think so I don't have anything here do you see the green share screen button on zoom um, no, I just have the uh, the raise hand one in the middle. Oh, the mute, uh, mute, unmute. Okay, let's see. Do you uh, do, do the board members have uh, plan sets in their possession or? Sure, hold on, let me pull it up. Let's go online. Okay. 
Okay, so Lori, for the plans that are online, would it be the one that's on top or the, let's see. Um, it should be the, the plan last revised April 18, 2023. Uh, okay, I see three, seven, site plan four, seven, oh, 418, 2023, there we go. Okay, so why don't um, I'll pull up my screen and you can sort of tell me where you want to look. Okay, so do you see 455 Whitney Street here? Permit yeah. site? Oh, yes. Okay. okay, so is there. Um, so you can go to the third sheet, which would be the existing conditions. There you go. Oh, you just went past it, but that's oh, okay. Fine. Here we go. Okay, so that just shows the existing conditions, the existing uh, limits of the pavement. There's uh, really the only thing to note here is uh, where it says lot A to the right, you'll see the sort of the proposed saw cut line in the area of pavement to be removed. Um, and then if you want to go to the next uh, sheet, I can show you what we're doing. Oops. I'm sorry, I got fancy to resize it and now I can't. <laughs> okay. So. All right. So right there's that right there's good. So um as you know, the the uh applicant is proposing a forty five hundred square foot building addition. We're proposing uh some stormwater features. We've worked with Mr. Litchfield on these. We're gonna have a um, next to the addition is the infiltration dry well system which will handle the roof runoff um also the area of pavement that's shaded that's going to be replaced that's being re actually scaled back a little bit you'll see the right edge has been cleaned off and pulled back away from the property line a little bit um and we've added a uh, catch basin structure in the lower right corner um <clears throat> with bituminous berm edging uh mr litchfield had wanted to uh, use this as an opportunity to improve the stormwater on site. So the area of pavements partly being replaced because we had to tweak the grades to uh, pitch everything into that corner to be collected into the uh, catch basin unit, which um, if you can go to the next page, I can show you what's happening. So you, as you see the proposed contours, it's going to go down into the catch basin unit, which would then dump uh, slightly to the south into a four bay, a grassed four bay, which will then cross over a um, a weir uh, into a, it's a, basically a, a a weir with a piece of concrete curbing to create a a, a set a stone weir elevation, then into a, a level spreader, a stone lined level spreader. Um, so this will allow for easier maintenance. They can maintain the catch basin and then remove any sediment out of the grassed uh, four bay, which um, would be easier than trying to remove sediment out of a stone lined trench uh, for the level spreader. And then once <clears throat> this elevation is set on the right hand side of the level spreader, once the, if the water gets up to a certain height, it'll then um, sheet flow towards the east. Um, on the back side of that level spreader, we're proposing the six foot solid fence to uh, pr cr help create sort of a visual buffer for the neighbors to the east. Um, and then we're also adding a dumpster um, pad to the left of the four bay. They currently have dumpsters in that location, but I don't think they're on a pad. So the pad's gonna have a fence enclosure on three sides to um, sort of uh, visually hide it from the street so it won't won't be much of an eyesore. Um, and then if you can pan down a little bit. On the entrance there, uh, Mr. Litchfield asked us to look at the entrance. Uh, one of the sheets in the set, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, shows the turning movements for WB67 tractor trailer, which would be the largest size truck that might ever enter this place. And the existing curb layout uh, is such that when somebody is coming from the east in the right lane, they won't be able to make that turn without 
turning out into the oncoming traffic in the other lane. So we've proposed a new curb line and sort of a concrete rumble strip in that area um, to allow for a wider entrance, which um, you'll see if you look at the uh, turning movement sheet, you'll see that this then accommodates a truck will be able to make uh, the turning movements coming in. Also going up to the back end of the parking lot to the right and be able to back into the existing loading dock area. Um, we've also proposed, if you can go back one page, uh, if you don't mind, to the previous page, the there you go. So we're also replacing some trees. Those three trees on the right are to sort of make up for the three existing trees that are going to have to be removed where the addition is going to go. We're also proposing, um, you can see uh, we've de demarcated areas of snow storage. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of restriping going on near the front entrance. And also we're adding um, five additional parking spaces uh, over what's there. And this still provides enough room for a tractor trailer to go up into that right-hand corner, do their turning movement and back into the, um, into the loading dock. If you could, if it's possible to just pan up a little bit more so you'll see we're also adding some plantings on the along the north uh, border there to um, help with the screening from the housing development uh, to the northeast. And I think we're also adding some miscellaneous small plantings on the front of the building near this, along the street. Um, oops. Yeah, off to the left there. So just had some small plantings around that. Um, around that area that's basically the extent uh, oh we're also adding a proposed concrete wheel stops on the right hand side of that parking lot but right now it's just a, a flat edge uh, and the water just sheets off into the grass which uh, if you look at the existing grading eventually does make its way towards the four bay so um we put the wheel stops on there to just to try to preserve that grassed area because that basically acts as a grass strip uh, for the runoff, which currently gets there. So we won't be increasing any of the runoff um, uh, off the off of the site. And then um, if you want to um, scroll down, I think it's to the, we had sent a, a revised lighting plan. I'm not sure if you have the latest and greatest, if you keep going. Um, Lori, did that come separately? I feel like I saw that as a separate file. Will that be in here with this one or a separate file? Yeah, so we did receive um, a separate photometric plan and the cut sheets for all of the, the various lighting options. Okay, do you want me to switch over to that? Because I think it came separately to us. Or do you feel like it's in this document? Well, um, here, really. Yeah, no, that's that's the last, that's the previous iteration. Oh, okay. So hold on. So we had asked uh, the uh, the applicant, um, Ben, was able to provide us a few uh, photos of the existing light fixtures that were on the building. And we were able to track down a couple of, of the exact fixtures. And the other ones, we found sort of equivalent fixtures uh, to the as best we could do to try to um, to show what's out there now. The updated photometric plan is dated April 26th. Oh, good. That's helpful. Oops. All right. So I have, I think it came to us. Here we go. I have it. Okay. So does this look like the correct plan? That's Yes, think? that's the one. If you could just zoom in a little bit, that'd be great. Okay. okay. So, um, the there's four different um uh fixtures the fixture a that's the one the new one that we're proposing that's the two locations on the uh, addition that's the only proposed lights that we have the rest are what uh are to represent what's what's there now um b and c we were able to positively identify the exact fixtures d we had to look at what was there and sort of give it our best uh our best approximation as to what is there for that wall pack and then um so you can see the contours uh the foot candle contours uh on the plan uh i'll just keep in mind too that the foot candle contours only represent 
these fixtures. If there's any kind of ambient light coming off the street or if there's street lights out there or anything like that, that won't be, those not aren't taken into account for this particular plan. Um, and then a question came through recently about fixture B asking if it had a shield on it. These fixtures are usually available with multiple types of shields to provide like full cutoff um, uh, characteristics. And uh, based on the photo that we got, <clears throat> The, the existing examples of fixture B on the building do not appear to have shields, but that fixture is still being manufactured now, and you can go on the Lithonia lighting, that's the brand, and um, you can order the shields, and they just screw mount onto the, uh, onto the fixture, so that could be modified for pretty cheap money. <clears throat> and then you can adjust the angle, and to ensure nothing is getting cast above the horizontal plane which is usually what you want for cutoff fixtures. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay, anything else you wanted to point out about this plan? Oh, uh, no, I'm sorry, just the, uh, the, the, the two that we are proposing are full cutoff, uh, I think they're like night sky compliant LED fixtures. So it's total downcast light, nothing pointed above uh, horizontal on that one. Okay. Um, do while we're on this one, do board members have any questions about the lighting? Um, yeah, I guess it was me who brought up the B that's mm. closer to the new addition, and that one points directly across at houses. And there was a letter to the ZBA from a resident, so I was wondering if that B or any of the Bs, but most of that one, the other lights aren't really shining on houses. Yeah, if that light could be. Like you mentioned, if we could have a condition to add the shield and adjust adjust it so it doesn't shine on the houses. Yeah, that's the one that you, you could add a shield very easily. It's I think it's just four screws. And then you can you can adjust the um <clears throat> the angle that the thing is pointing at. Um so you could put it, you just put that at like a 45 degree angle with a shield on it and I mean, someone you might be able to like actually see the point of light in the distance, but as far as a casting light onto mm -hmm. somebody else's property, that fixture is not really strong enough to be casting light onto some onto the ground. And the fence that we're proposing, as I, I believe it scales, it's like 160 feet away from that fixture. So even if it was at a 60 degree uh, angle with the shield on it, uh, in light uh, and, and measurable foot candles would not be cast on the uh, other property. But yes, to answer your question, yeah, you put a shield on it, you can tweak the angle, you can do whatever you want to it to make sure. Okay. I don't know if board members mind, but if we decided um, to vote in favor, would you mind adding a condition that we add the shield and adjust so it doesn't shine? Yeah, I had the same question for the floodlights. Um, that was a concern of mine as well. I don't know if other board members saw that too. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. No. Okay. Okay, anything else here? <laughs> Chris, anything else you want to point out? No, that's pretty much the uh, the gist of it. We just went back and forth with Mr. Litchfield a few times to make sure he was okay with what we were proposing for the drainage. It's just a deep sump catch basin into a four bay into a level spreader. So it's uh, much improved over what was there before, the outlet from the dry well um goes straight into the level spreader which you're allowed to do because it's since it's roof runoff it's considered quote unquote clean by the dep stormwater standards um and uh that's about it with the entrance tweaks for the rumble strip and the lighting changes it's a little bit of striping and landscaping and that's about it okay um any questions on what was just presented before we move on to groundwater or the town planners recommendations and also we have a letter from the fire chief oh amy go ahead i just had some questions um i don't know if this goes in with the groundwater though i was just going to ask um fred do you do a check of the snow storage calculations just to make sure are those two areas large enough to collect all the snow that's needed it seems like a pretty big parking lot I just was uh, afraid of the one in the back. I don't want it to run off into the neighbor's yard, but it does look like 
it's right near the infiltration basin. So I'm not sure if that's what will happen if the snow pile gets too large back there. Hi, Amy. Yes, I do uh, look at the snow storage calculations and they, they seem fine. Um, there's always a ability to put it in a condition that if it gets over a certain height that they're required to take it off site. It's not always necessary because that's simply the, the normal practice uh, for most people removing snow anyway. Uh, usually it's in the owner's best interest to keep the snow piles down because he needs his parking lot for um, other stuff. So it's, uh, it's not an issue as far as I'm concerned. Okay. And I had a question. I don't know if the um, engineer knows. What is the building heated with right now? I can take that. It's heated with gas. Okay. All right. Because that's something we always put on groundwater too, is that it shall not be heated by oil. Understood. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's fully heated by gas. Okay. I had um, a question on the fence too. We got some elevation pictures and they were great. It was a great little video that shows the whole site plan. Good. And, and on that video, it looks like a vinyl fence and it looks like a nice vinyl fence. So I was wondering if, if you'd be open to doing that versus the wood stockade fence or? I mean, I would prefer the vinyl fence anyway. I think it'll last longer and uh, provide a better product. So yes, we're, we're open to a vinyl fence. Okay. And in the video too, it shows a couple trees behind the fence. How many trees are going to be cut down to do the level spreader? Like, is it going to be clear cut back there to the edge of the property or are there some trees going to be left? No, I mean, we're showing the proposed tree line. Um, there will be some trees left. I mean, when we do the survey and if it's a wooded area, we usually will survey the edge of it um, unless there's a standalone, a couple of standalone trees like there were in the north, we don't locate every single tree. There were a couple in that area that we did locate, but for the most part, we just we just uh, locate the wooded edge. So to answer your question, I personally don't know how many trees there are currently there and how many would get taken out. I could just give you, you know, an area that would that we got to push the tree line back to put the erosion barrier in before we start construction. Yeah. There just doesn't look like a lot of space. I drove out there in between the driveway and then where the hill starts going down, it looks like a very narrow strip of trees. So I can imagine if the level spreader is going in there, that's going to like clear most of the trees there. I didn't know in the video it showed there were like four or five trees planted behind the fence. I don't know if there's room for that to be added just to put some trees back where they're going to be cut down. I mean, I'm sure there there will be room between the edge of the uh, the work and the property line. Um, as far as what you want done, I guess I'll leave that up to you and the and the owner. As far as what they're going to replant back there. Okay, I I was concerned that um, that was the reason why I recommended the fence instead of planting because it looked to me like what they would have to do is remove all of the existing vegetation in order to plant any sort of trees because it's so narrow back there. And I'd hate for them to take down taller trees in order to put up six foot tall trees. Right, but what if they're coming down? Like, what if they're taking them down? I don't think that they're taking all of them down. They're, they're definitely going into it, um, but then they would have the six foot stockade fence or vinyl fence. <laughs> um, so that would provide the screening. Right. And, and hopefully they'd be able to keep some of the mature, more mature vegetation. It is kind of scruffy back there, but there right. are some trees in the, in the area. So I certainly don't know the answer to the number of trees that will be taken down, but I certainly like trees and would like to leave as many as possible. I don't know if that helps anything, but that is certainly our goal is to leave as many trees as possible. 
I just want to show a quick picture. So that's what it looks like now when that's where the fence is going. Yes. And it looks so small. I didn't know if those big trees yet yeah, were coming down. I do, I would like to keep them too, but if they did come down, I'd like them replaced with something else. And we can certainly replace what we can. And yeah, again, I'm not sure, um, you know, speaking to what Chris was saying, and he said he thinks there will be room um, and if, if we will replant what we can, certainly. Okay. I mean, I don't know if that's a, that's a funny condition to add. Like, I wouldn't want trees pulled down, but if they are, I'll pull down because they have to. It would be great to put some back. Great. So, Lori, what would that look like? Assuming board, well, first of all, board members, um, but does the vinyl fence sound better to the, everyone? We, in that case, we would just have to change condition J from stockade to vinyl. Yes. Yep. So, okay. Um, so that solves that piece. But Lori, how would that be um, articulated in a way that actually we're not asking for those trees to come down. We're just, if they're taken down, well, I mean that was that was the reason for the fence suggestion. Oh, okay. Because I so don't I don't think that they're going to be able to um, plant trees without removing trees. So that the fence was aimed at providing the buffer. Okay. So you know I'd prefer to keep whatever can be kept. Oh yeah. I was thinking something like if mature trees are have, need to be removed, if they're removed, not that we want them to be removed, but if mature trees are removed, then plantings would be put back in replacement. I definitely I'm just don't concerned that there's no space. So in order to, to get those trees in, you'll have to take down trees in order to to put them there. Right. So that's I think it kind of defeats the purpose. Right. I guess what I was saying though is if they take them out, not not telling them to take them out. But it sounds like there's any we, we can't we have to keep the ones that are there and we can't really do anything to put back the the full size ones. So right. we have to kind of keep as many as we can and go with that. Right. I mean, we can also, you know, during the course of inspecting the site before they get an occupancy permit, if we look and see that they removed all the trees, then that will be non-compliant with the decision because the final plan is showing that they're keeping vegetation. So then at that point, it becomes an enforcement discussion that they would have to put trees in so that they would comply with the final site plan. Okay, so we're essentially covered with what we have. I believe so. Okay. Yeah, and you can it's, you could do an inspection once the erosion barrier is put in, because that has to go in before you do any construction. And then you'll see exactly how much room is left between that and the edge of the property. And if there are if there is any space to plant some, you know, either low low canopy stuff or saplings or whatever, you'd be able to see what you have with space. Any other questions from you, Amy? Uh, I don't think so right now. Okay, Any um, Bill or Anthony, any questions from you? Not for me. Nothing for me. Um, okay, I have a couple questions about um, the, Fred, I see that in your letter, you are fine with the waiver on the analysis, um, but also commented about removing the cabinet. Does condition K actually satisfy the removal of the cabinet by way of saying that they can't have any of that in storage on site? Is that what covers that? That's that's for going forward. The, my understanding, the cabinet's already been removed. I just okay. think that needs to be verified at some point, but that condition is about going forward. They can't put anything else in there later. Okay. I, mean, I, I verify the cabinet is gone. Obviously, you're all, any or all of you are welcome to come by the facility and take a look. Um, but the cabinet has been removed as well as all the comments. Okay, great. Um, the sprinkler system the fire chief mentioned, is that all set? Is that taken care of or reflected somehow? 
I do oh. have a condition, um, which actually is misnumbered A. Uh, it should really be J. Uh, it's on page six of the draft decision, which talks about fire suppression services and connections. So that includes the sprinkler. Okay, great. And then there is prior to issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall demonstrate to the fire department that there is sufficient flow to support expansion of the sprinkler system to the addition. Okay, so all of our numbers then will be a little weird. So I think we actually, if we add the condition about the shield, I think we'll end at, what will we end at? P, Q? So, so if we're only adding, so if we're not adding Amy's condition about the heating with oil, which of course, if they're heating with gas, then that pretty much takes care of that one. Um, so it would be Q. Q is where we would end. Okay. So that would be with just one addition of the, the lighting condition. Okay, great. Um, the other question I had um, was just related to the color of the building. So um, Lori, I think your preference was the black. You know, I don't... <laughs> I'm a symmetry girl. I, I like things to, to be balanced. And I personally um, don't like the look of a two-tone building. If it's, you know, one portion of the building is one color and one portion of the building is another color. So I don't really care what color the building ultimately is, as long as the addition is the same color as the main building. That's my preference. But of course, you know, you've the planning board is making the call on this, not me. So it's just my recommendation. And so for uh, for Chris, what color was it? Black or navy that you were doing? So the, the, the building currently is actually like it's like a navy, and the the new addition is going to be a, a lighter blue. We couldn't match. So in in order when we were looking at the the colors that the building could come in, we couldn't match the color exactly. So yeah. instead of getting a building that looked unintentionally not color matched, we decided to go completely different with a complementary color that clearly looked intentional. That's why we went lighter blue. We felt it would be a nice color contrast and would look intentional as opposed to foolish. Got it. Any board thoughts on that one? Can you pull it up? Do you have it? I know. <laughs> Here, I'm putting you on the spot. That's okay. I think I can pull it up. Um, I think I have the PDF version. Great videos, by the way. I was th those are um, really nice. We've, I don't think we've ever had that before. Glad you all liked them. <laughs> very exciting. Okay, let's see. Guy did a very nice job. Yeah, that was a nice job. Um, I'm just trying to find the. Let's see. Or do you remember when those came over? It came with the same time of the lights or before the lights? I emailed it out today because I, I think it was today, right? That I forwarded it. Oh, so it, it's under a conversation. That's why I got to move up a little bit. Yeah, I ended up looking at them again today as well <laughs> after I saw your email. Because <laughs> they were such great videos. <laughs> <laughs> they are really cool. <laughs> the bird's eye effect. <laughs> um sorry let's see there are the videos but i can't find oh it was a link that's why there's not an attachment the pdf was actually a link as well i got it okay just taking a minute all right so i'm going to pull it up Okay, can everybody see the PDF here? Yep. All right, so you can see the different colors. I'm trying to see if there's a. Okay, so it's the dark and then it has the complementary blue. It's Hawaiian blue. The first one may be the best way to see everything. 
So any thoughts from the board? So it sounds like basically you chose this as this part as a complimentary lighter blue to the navy. Correct. And so Lori, this is why you thought black because this was navy. I guess I just haven't, it's tough to tell in the picture if that's really navy, would that look weird to be black? Um, it looked black to me, but um, if it's navy, that's that's fine too. My my thought is, if they wanted to go with a lighter blue, then they should paint the existing building that same color blue. If they want to go with the navy blue or the black, whatever color that is, then they should paint the um, the addition that same color. That's my suggestion. Just so it looks like it's a, a uniform, you know, it's all part of the same complex. It's not like a separate addition, like clearly an addition. Thoughts from board members on that one? I just imagine that they would want this pre-painted so they don't have to maintain it going down, the, you know, into the future, but it's my guess. So what do you mean by that, Anthony? Like these already come painted? Well, I think that's, yeah, that's metal. And I think it comes painted already. And Correct. Yes. Yeah. So would, which would be a lot more resilient than actually painting over that. Okay. So otherwise, uh, is this also the darker portion? Is it pre-painted metal as well? So it, it is painted metal, yes. Okay. So to paint over it, is that... Um, like then become a maintenance thing all the time? Or do people normally paint over metal like that? I mean, it is a painted building. Um, and some of it is, I mean, you can see where some of it needs to be repainted anyway. Um, so, I mean, it, it is a maintenance thing to some extent. Um, but that's, that's all that I really know about it. Okay. Amy or Bill, thoughts from you on color? Nothing for me. Anyway, yeah, I don't know. I'm not good with color schemes. <laughs> I'm not super opposed. It does look a little bit off to be two colors like that. I mean, but what what faces the what part of this faces the street anyway? Because you can see it both from the street. Does it look? What does it look like? You look. If you go back to that top view, that that part over to the left there, where you see that little stone facade, that's the yep. front of the. Okay, so this here, if you see from the street, do you even really right. see this back here, or? You will. I'm, you will. You you can't see it. Yes. Oh, I see. Here's the entrance. I see. I wondered if like a gray would even match the black or the navy more, but like a darker color, but but I don't I don't know because I'm like I said. Can't change it. Yeah, so, so so we we've already ordered the building. The building is set in the the, the new portion is set in that lighter blue. Oh, so you'd have to repaint the other part. Okay. Yes. All right. Laura, you have an expression on your face that tells me you. <laughs> <laughs> Just a personal preference. <laughs> I don't have a very good poker face, so. <laughs> I mean, does anybody feel strongly about the color? Is it is it a, I mean, how much work is it to match it to the new color so it's all uniform? I mean, my guess is it's going to be thousands of dollars to paint the the existing structure. I mean, I, I we haven't priced it out yet. We're we're trying to get a bid for that, but we uh, we haven't priced it out. But I mean, it's going to be I don't know tens of thousands is my guess. Did this go to design review or not? To design? It didn't. No, it doesn't trigger. Oh, it's non-conforming, so it did not. Um, it's an addition to an industrial oh. use, so it's not triggered. Got it. Okay. Well, Amy, you're the design review chair. What what do you suppose? <laughs> I leave that design up to Lisa. 
I do the more of the zoning code part of it, but I don't know. I think if it was downtown, I would definitely want it to match and actually probably not want it to be metal. But since it's way out in the industrial area, I don't know. It's up to the rest of the board. I don't feel strongly about it. I don't know if anyone else does. I don't either. Yeah. Phil, do you feel strongly? No. Uh, you mentioned that you're going to paint that the main building, that there's already a bid out for so, that. So the, let's see, it's the west side. The west side is has some fading and, and a few spots of peeling. I mean, at this point, it could be um, touched up, but it will eventually need to be repainted. It, it doesn't need it. It's not urgent. Um, it's something that we're going to do at some point. Well, what about a condition that when it does re require full repainting, that it matches the addition or that it goes back to a uniform color? Is that a, a possible condition, Laurie, in your mind? So that they don't have to do that now, but the next time they do need to do that, so it's within their budget that that be done? Sure. Does that sound like something a little better that if you have to paint it anyway to do the best that you can to match that exact color? Yeah, I feel like that's really, thank you. Board members, how do you feel about something like that? I kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, that's where I was going. Okay. Okay, and there's also a waiver on the parking lot. So that was actually to remove spaces, correct? Um, so they're actually striping, uh, I think it's four or five additional parking spaces. Um, but because this is a non-conforming structure and a non-conforming use, uh, it never had the required number of parking spaces in conformance with today's requirements. Um, but it's clear from the fact that they have two tractor trailers stored on parking spaces that they have more than enough parking to serve their needs. And this addition is just going to be used for storage. It's my understanding that they're not proposing to hire any new people as part of this, uh, this project, this expansion project. So I think that they have clearly demonstrated um, that the the parking that's required in our zoning today is overkill. It's mm -hmm. it's not necessary for their use of the property. Okay. Any board questions on that? No, I think that's good. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing then. Are there any questions from staff at this time? Okay. I don't have any additional questions unless board members have additional questions. No. No. Nope. Okay. Um, this is a public hearing. So at this time, I will accept any comments from the public. Are there any? Um, also, I, Amy, you mentioned a letter that went to the ZBA. I don't think the planning board received any letters from the public on this. I did not see any come through. Were there any letters from the public? I don't think so. Just to the ZBA. And she just asked that I wrote down. She asked that the snow doesn't, um, or the water doesn't flow onto our property, that the lights don't shine towards her house. And I think that was, I could pull it up, but she had a couple things. Let me just look really fast. I might actually have that letter with me. <clears throat> oh, she asked to plant live plant screening along the property line. So she wanted to see some planting, make sure the exterior lights don't shine towards our house, which I think we covered. She didn't, she hoped that the drainage runoff control so that the rain and snow melt doesn't flow onto the properties below. Um, Fred, in your evaluation, do you feel like that the flow is something that we don't have to worry about going under someone else's property or? Um, the only flow that's going to come off the site will be from the level spreader, and I, and there's nothing else they can do about it. It's already going that way now, and it will be reduced. So I don't see it as a exasperation of the problem. Okay. If there even even is a problem. Got it. Okay. Um, 
so then in that case, we have a couple of things that we've discussed. One is that change to condition J, which it may not be J anymore, but it's really, it's just changing to the vinyl fence. I think it might still be J. Um, G, the um, condition G, instead of the color of the addition shall be black. So it's consistent with the existing building. We talked about just modifying that to be um, when the main building or whatever, however we'd word that, the existing building requires um, to be repainted that they match the color as closely as possible or however we'd word that. And, and just for, you know, just so that we have the flexibility, we, we can change it to any color at that point, correct? You don't care as long as it's all uniform, correct? Well, I mean, I guess if, if fluorescent pink, that's a problem. But... <laughs> Understood. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing too Either great. one of the two current colors that we're proposing. <laughs> that's we're fine with me. Correct. Lori, do we need to be that prescriptive about color or? No, I don't think so. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Um, let's see, there's a number change in the conditions where we just have to fix the numbering that fire suppression one just needs to change. And then um, I think that's it. So really we're still at Q, is that right? We're still at condition Q? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Did you add on the condition about adding the shields to the... Yeah, so the, I'm sorry, I'm glad you brought that up. So that it includes one addition, which the addition would be the shields to the... Um, I guess they're called, I don't know if you call them the floodlights or the type B lights or whatever they are, but. Yeah, add the shields to the current B light facing the neighbors so it doesn't shine across. But I don't know how, Lori, did you have an idea of how to word that? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna wordsmith it a little more. Um, yeah. I, I wrote shield shall be added to fixture B to create to create a, full cutoff effect and the angle shall be adjusted so it does not shine into abutting residential properties. Um, but I, I'm gonna clean that up a little more. Sounds good. Okay, great. Um, and that's all that I had on my list for um, changes or additions. Are there any other conditions that the board wishes to discuss at this time? I had added, it's another lighting one that says all exterior lighting shall be dark sky compliant, consisting of full cutoff shielded lights. So that's just talking about the new lights, which they are, but it's a condition that we use. So they're already compliant with it, but I think it's good to have it in there just in case, you know, a owner in the future adds more lighting. Okay, well, go ahead. That that doesn't, uh, that would mean that all of their lighting would have to be dark sky compliant. So they would have to replace everything. Oh, it wouldn't be as Not new. all of their lighting. Although it's all LED lighting, it's not necessarily all dark sky compliant. I was just thinking for the new ones that they're putting on the warehouse. Well, they did provide us the specs for that. So I can attest that those are dark sky compliant. Okay. And those actually have the shields too. Yes, they're all full cut off. And those are referenced in the decisions, the specific type, as well as the photometric plan. Okay. The only other change I had was to see, um, to, to do it like our last decision where hours of operation related to construction of the project exterior work only shall be limited seven to seven Monday through Saturday and no exterior site work shall take place. So again, that, you know, if they want to work on the inside of the building, that's fine. But on Sundays, there's no exterior work. That's fine. Any board members have an issue with that? Okay. No, I think that should probably be a standard going forward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So and Amy, I'm sorry, I didn't have this pulled up before. I, um, the building shall not use oil for heating purposes. Is that a condition we need to add or is that covered by way of them choosing gas? We're already fully gas. We're gonna continue on gas. Okay. Yeah, I think it's covered. Okay, got it. I just put it there so I knew to ask. Nope, I'm glad you did. Um, I think that we covered the fence part of it and then that's all. Oh, you had some edits to the... Um, 
decision. Um, one was to just note that the current warehouse has two loading bays. There are no additional loading bays being constructed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's reflected on the elevation plans. So they wouldn't be able to, to put any additional bays without coming for approval for that. So the elevation drawings are only showing those two bays. So we have three bays, and maybe the elevation is wrong, but we actually have three bays currently. Okay. I just put it there because some of our other warehouses we've done that on Lyman Street and even the last one. It's easy to see in the de decision that there were going to be 28. You know, so I just, I didn't think it hurt anything. But I guess we should have change it to three. Are there, so there are three, Lori? Um, do you still have that uh, elevation drawing that you brought up earlier with the two-tone building? Uh, yep. Nope. Wait, hold no. on. Oh, yes, I do. I do. Yep. Um, All right. So there's two. And there's one toward the back. Oh. One toward, yes, yeah, you can see the three there. The two on the left look as one, but you can see a divider in between them. One's a larger and one's a smaller. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. I can add that three loading days. Okay. And then it looks like just, I think we did this to the last one too, just provided that the conditions of approval stated below are imposed. It's just clarifying that under those conditions, we find this meets. I was wondering too, if that's something we can just do going forward too. Sure. Okay. Any other? Comments from the applicant or board members? I don't have any others, thank you. Okay. Um, so then is there a motion to close the hearing for 455 Whitney Street? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor, Bill? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Amy? Aye. It carries an aye. So the public hearing has been closed at this point. Um, why don't we talk about before we vote the um, criteria. We are voting on the groundwater protection special permit and also site plan approval. So why don't we start with the um, groundwater special permit. Looking at the criteria for this, which I can never find quickly. Page 768. Oh, there we go. Okay, so does the board feel that um, this meets the purpose and intent of this chapter and will not derogate from the purpose of the groundwater protection overlay district? Any comments or thoughts on that? No, nope. as designed, yeah, it does. Um, will not during construction or thereafter impair ambient groundwater quality or reduce existing recharge capacity beyond that allowed per this chapter. Agree. Okay. And will not adversely affect the quality or the yield of an existing or potential water supply. Agree. Agree. Yep. Okay. Um, site plan criteria. Take a look at that. And then, of course, based on our conditions for the decision criteria, um, number one, the site plan meets all applicable requirements of this bylaw. Yep. yep. 
Um, given the location type and extent of land use proposed by the proponent, the design of the building form, building location, egress points, grading, and other elements of the site plan could not be reasonably altered to, and on page 716, if you want to follow along, reduce clearing and grading on the site or reduce the volume of cut and fill, number of removed trees, and so on. This is criteria yep. one. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, reduce the risk of groundwater contamination from on-site wastewater disposal systems or operations on the premises involving use, storage, handling, or containment of hazardous substances. Yep. Improve pedestrian, bicycle, or vehicular safety, both on-site and aggressing from it. Yep. Improve access to each structure for fire and other emergency service equipment. Yep. Yes. Reduce visual intrusion by controlling visibility of parking, storage, etc. cetera. Agree. Yes. Achieve greater consistency and compatibility with surrounding area as to building design or scale or site design. Okay. Yes. Yep. Reduce glare from headlights, reduce light trespass from luminaries onto adjacent lots on the, or the street or light overspill into night sky. Agree. Okay. Yes. Um, avoid removal or disruption of historic, traditional, or significant structures, et cetera. Agree. Agree. And reduce obstruction of scenic views from publicly accessible locations. Agree. Agree. And I don't think this had any variances. Bless you. Any variances on this one? I don't think so. No. There's okay. Okay. So it sounds like based on our conditions that we've imposed, we think that they've met the criteria for the groundwater special permit and the site plan special permit. So um, a couple of things. We also have some waivers. Is there any further discussion? on the requirement to submit an analysis by a technically qualified expert? Uh, before you vote on the waivers, you just want to close the public hearing. I do. Oh. <laughs> I must have slept through it. Sorry. That's OK. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see. So if there's no further discussion on the waiver, is there a motion to grant the waiver of zoning bylaw section 707010D? For a five requirement to submit an analysis by a technically qualified expert. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, Bill. Aye. Anthony. Aye. Amy. Aye. And carries an aye. There's a mo there's a request for a waiver for the requirement to provide one parking space per 500 square feet of gross floor area. Any further discussion on that? Mm. Okay. Is there a motion to grant the waiver of zoning bylaw section 7B2C4 requirement to provide one parking space per 500 square feet of gross floor area? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, Bill? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Amy? Aye. It carries an aye. And in light of the conditions and the granting of waivers, is there a motion to grant a groundwater protection special permit per zoning bylaw section 707? 010D3C1 and site plan approval per section 703050A1B to allow construction of a 4,500 square foot building addition and associated improvements at 455 Whitney, excuse me, 455 Whitney Street, subject to findings of fact one through 12 and conditions of approval A through Q. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, Bill? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Amy? Aye. And carries an aye. So with that, um, I think we have a good draft of the decision and we should be set. So thank you very much to the applicant and we look forward to your addition. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay, next on our agenda, we have the, uh, we're down to old business. There are no further public hearings this evening. We have the discussion of development proposal at 300 Bartlett Street, which is before the ZBA for approval, but we actually do a technical review as the planning board for our bylaws and draft a memo to the board, um, to the ZBA if we so choose, if there's anything we wanna note or recommendations that this board has based on our review. Um, Lori, is there anything that you'd wanna to speak to on this application, just a general, um, overview of what they're doing. I can also pull it up from the website. I don't know, do board members have a chance to look at 300? Is it 300 Bartlett? Yeah. Well, also um, the applicant's engineer should be here oh. Oh, and great. ready to speak on this application. His name is Peter. Oh, great, okay, here we go. 
Hi, Peter. Thanks for joining us tonight. Good evening. How are you? Good. Great. Um, so I guess, Peter, you're the right person to ask if there's anything just at a high level for this site plan um, that would help the board sort of um, consider any additional factors here. Yeah, I can just give a real high level presentation. Um, the location is 300 Bartlett Street. It's situated between, uh, it's the existing FedEx freight site, uh, if the board is familiar with that. So it's situated between a Dewey pile and the Amazon facility on Bartlett Street. Um, it's currently occupied by a trucking terminal uh, for, for FedEx. That terminal is comprised of uh, 56 total loading docks um, and associated parking, utility, stormwater, et cetera. Uh, the purpose of this project is to expand that existing facility. Uh, what they're proposing is to add an additional 20 loading docks um, a about a thousand square foot uh, break room for the employees, and then uh, separately uh, detached from the main building would be a about an eleven thousand square foot uh, maintenance shop building. Oh, sorry, Peter. I'm sorry. Um, here we go. I lost you for a second. Sorry about that. Yep. No, that was me. Sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So. Um, where did I, where did you, where did you last? Um, you, uh, the last word I heard was building. Okay. So yeah, separate from the, um, from the main FedEx trucking terminal building is a 11,000 square foot uh, maintenance shop. And that shop is um, meant to be used exclusively for the FedEx fleet of vehicles. Um, so that's not like, uh, you know, a shop that would be open to the public. Um, the majority on the work uh, of work proposed at the site is within the existing parking lot. So it's, uh, you know, currently an impervious area that would be converted from, you know, pavement or parking area to proposed building. Um, and I think I'll, I'll just leave it there. That's kind of a very high level um, presentation of, of what's being proposed and, and I'll be happy to do a Q&A if the board has any questions. Okay, any questions from board members, Amy? Yeah, I just wanted to run it by the board that um, he came in front of us for design review and the design review committee had some concerns, but I did notice when I read your application for the ZBA that you did speak to some of the design review concerns. And actually, as we talked about them as the design review, we're trying to think, should the memo come from design review or should we send it from the planning board? Like some of the things might not have been design review things. But um, so one of the concerns was to add ab varieties, some more landscaping as a buffer from the street. And um, I saw in his application, he said the applicant has agreed to provide 29 trees along the frontage. Um, a second thing design review discussed was um, the site lighting is um, they didn't have the full cutoff shields. And there was um, shine even down onto like Bartlett Pond and and one of the concerns and the suggestions that design review had was that they put shielding on the lights up there. And um, according to the application, he said that the applicant agrees to review the feasibility of adding light shielding to the existing poles to prevent glare on Bartlett Pond. Um, do you know if he will, um, if you'll be able to do that feasibility study before going to the applicant, I mean, the ZBA? Yeah, so the, um, the, the feasibility study is not actually my concern. That, that doesn't take very long for us to do. The problem is um, FedEx is a national corporation and uh, getting things approved with FedEx is uh, sometimes takes, takes some time. So because it's, you know, lighting and lights that are within their existing parking lot, we just haven't heard back yet on if that's acceptable or not. To me, it's a pretty pretty easy and simple ask. So I don't really see it being a problem. Uh, and my hope is that we can have a an official response one way or the other prior to the ZBA hearing. Yep. And just like, like with the last applicant we talked about, he said they could add shields to the lights. So that's what design review was hoping that um, FedEx could do too. And um, the third, discussion we had was the truck traffic to um, recommend that the truck traffic has to turn right out of the parking lot. So it's not going towards the high school and the residential neighborhoods. 
Yep. Uh, can I, is it okay if I speak sure. to that as well? Okay, great. So um, since that time that we had the uh, design review meeting, TEC has um, completed a traffic study. We studied the intersection of the driveway with Bartlett Street. That driveway is shared. It's uh, used by both FedEx and Amazon. Um, and then we also studied the intersection uh, in one intersection into the site. That's kind of like the splitting point between FedEx and Amazon's driveway. Um, and what we found is the, the existing intersection with Bartlett Street already is equipped with signage to direct trucks to the right. Um, we did a turning movement count at the intersection. And what we studied, it, this was done on a, on a Thursday morning and a Thursday afternoon. Uh, the hours were from 7 to 9 a.m. and 4 to 6 p.m. Um, the total amount of trucks uh, exiting the facility in those hours that we were there studying was 59 total. Uh, and of that 59, only six of them turned left. Um, so to me, kind of my, my kind of takeaway there was, I think the existing signage is working fairly well. Um, I think maybe there's an opportunity for FedEx to, um, you know, internally review with their staff, maybe some staff training options to, you know, on top of the signage, try and direct them to take a right for the, for the truck drivers. Uh, but, but overall, I think the, the percentage of trucks leaving the site and turning left is extremely low already. Where do you live, Peter? Uh, I live in Stoneham, Mass. So I have yet to drive through the center of Northboro without seeing a FedEx truck go through it. I, I strong, strongly, strongly would recommend this is a condition that not just a sign, it is a no, it's prohibiting that turn. We put it on all our conditions. We just put it on Bartlett. Um, I, I think, I think it's a must on this particular application. Yeah, I will agree. Um, Peter, you said it was that it was at six or nine trucks that made the the left hand turn. Six. So, it, yes, I agree in percentages. That's a low number, but if you live in that neighborhood, that's six too many for them. Yeah. Because then you have the six, the six from ADW Pile and the six from Amazon and the right. six from you know whatever else, and then just before you know it, it's twenty something. Anthony, you have something? Do we um? Did you see how many trucks were actually coming into the facility? From say. Uh, yes. He said 59, I think, right? I can look that up. If you all want to continue discussing, I can uh, get that number for you. Did the board um, you oh, go ahead, Lori. I, I have an additional question while you're looking that up. Of the 59 trucks, uh, are these tractor trailer trucks or are some of them pup trucks? Because it's my understanding that the pup trucks are making local deliveries. They're not all going out of town. So it would be, um, I'd be interested in knowing, uh, like, I don't know how we would restri restrict pup trucks that are making local deliveries from turning left because the, the concern that I have is you're just, if they have to go left, they have to go left to, to make those local deliveries. So if you're requiring them to go right, then what they're gonna do is they're gonna go down the street and they're gonna pull a Yui and then they're gonna go left, which is gonna create a traffic problem. So I wonder if we could differentiate between tractor trailer trucks that should always be going right versus pup trucks that are making local deliveries. And, and what are those kinds of trucks? I don't know what that means. Is that like just the small little vans? Is that a truck, a pup truck, as we're calling them? Uh, it's it's bigger than a van. It's uh, it's like a forty foot truck instead of a seventy five foot truck. Um, I, think... I can I can answer your question, Lori. Yours is actually a lot easier to answer because it's uh, they break out the the traffic data in the study by single unit trucks are counted separately from articulated trucks. So the articulated trucks are the big ones. 
uh, the full size 53 foot trailers. So in the morning, there were three 53 foot trailers that took a left and one single unit truck. So one pup truck that took a left. So there was four total. And then in the afternoon, there was uh, two single unit pup trucks that turned left and zero articulated trucks that turned left out of the site. I would think if they turn right coming out of the, then their GPS would re, like mine, it just reconfigures and it would take them down Hayes Memorial. And mm. then they're going down Hayes Memorial and down Route 20. Cause I don't think there'll be that many deliveries that would have to go to Bartlett Street. You know, either way, they're both going out onto Route 20. So if they go right. Yeah, that, that was going to be my question to um, Ms. Martinek was, is when you say, you know, you have FedEx trucks in downtown uh, Northborough, is that Route 20? Is that where you're? That is Route 20 that goes through okay. downtown. That's right. The main thing is to stop them from going past the high school and the neighborhoods there because it, the road just wasn't built for that all the new high school drivers. Yeah, and, and I'm completely in agreement on, on uh, you know, res restricting trucks, taking a left out of there. Um, I think the owner would be fine with a condition um, that would restrict the trucks turning, like, um, like the board is kind of recommending. Um, I don't know what the solution would be to keep trucks off of Route 20. Um, I think that would be a tall ask, um, but certainly something that I can look into and, and try to get an answer on. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, there are other ways you can come to go through Route 20. So point taken on, you can't just completely block off Route 20. I think to Amy's point, what happens is that specific stretch coming down Bartlett, going out um, by the high school, and then even that light. Um, when the truck, when the big trucks try to make the turn on that light at the corner of um, Bartlett and Route 20, it's really a dangerous intersection in my mind. Um, and even in terms of like the trucks not being able to make the turn if the cars are situated a certain way, it's just so tight. Um, it's not a good situation for those big trucks. So, you know, I, I guess we can't avoid every single situation, but at least um, that Bartlett that small area, if we can kind of protect that area, I think it would be helpful. I was thinking since we just went through the whole zero Bartlett, you know, we could send over in our review letter, a couple of conditions that we used, like we had delivery vans and commercial trucks exiting the project site shall be prohibited from turning left onto Bartlett street. All drivers of delivery vans and commercial trucks shall be instructed to enter and exit project site from the east. And then we also had install clearly visible signage at the site access driveway, directing all delivery vans and commercial trucks to turn right onto Bartlett Street. I mean, what I was thinking is just since we spent so much time on the conditions, we could send them as suggestions so they don't go back and you know have to watch our meeting if they wanted to. And they can decide how they want to, if they want to rephrase them, but. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And it sort of gets the point across. Were there any other questions from the board or thoughts? Um, Amy, you brought up the lights and I think that was a good one too. I, I've driven by there a couple of times at night and try to, it, it is nestled back there a little bit, which is good um, overall, but I do think some, if there is the opportunity to simply put those shields on, like we just talked about with the last applicant, it seemed like a easy solution that didn't require a whole lot of expense or. Mm -hmm. It would make a big difference to the people who live around there. Yeah. So you are our condition. I don't know if we want to use it, it says all exterior lighting shall be dark sky compliant, consisting of full cutoff shielded lights is what we had in our other decision. But it might have to be changed to say 
you know, like we did for the last one to add the shields to the lighting that's there. Um, I have a question for you, Peter. Do you guys ever run into trouble with that joint driveway at the bottom or has that been a fine, has that worked out okay? Uh, in what way do you mean? Do you both exit, is it that one exit for both of you? I'm trying to picture it. Yeah, there's there's one uh, there's one driveway that serves both Amazon and FedEx. Okay, so that hasn't been an issue like traffic wise or just I, I've never heard of a collision there or anything like that. That still seems to be an okay. Yeah, no, and and uh, based on the based on the study that we did prepare, it, it even with the expansion to the FedEx freight um, facility, that driveway is still operating like well under its capacity limits. Okay. Any other questions from the board? I had one more condition I was thinking of, and it was brought up by design review too. But um, and um, this was a condition I actually pulled from 200 Bartlett Street because we had a similar um, issue where they're doing a maintenance facility. And I think, um, Peter, you already agreed that this maintenance facility is only for their trucks, for FedEx trucks. That's so, correct. Yep. Yep. So one of the conditions on 200 Bartlett we had was the accessory use of vehicle repair shall be contained within the maintenance building. That way they're not fixing trucks all over the parking lot. And the other condition for 200 Bartlett we used was the servicing. Actually, I think the ZBA used these. The servicing and maintenance of vehicles shall be limited to the vehicles owned and or used in the ordinary course of business by the owner or subsequent owners of this property. The service and maintenance of other vehicles not owned or used by the property owner shall be prohibited. That way, the maintenance building is only used by FedEx or whoever buys it in the future, and it's not an overall truck repair shop for all different types of... And I actually have these typed up. I could forward, if everybody agrees, I could forward them to Lori. The only other thing design review noticed was that the FedEx sign is actually broken and it's it's someone must have smashed it or it, it cracked, but the applicant has agreed to repair the sign. So I don't know, Lori, if we put this all, all from the planning board or it should come from design review. See, I'm on both, so I'm talking about it both places. I, I would um, do two separate letters because the membership isn't the same. Mm -hmm. So uh, the only one that's the same is you, Mamie. <laughs> so I, I think it would be better to have um, have it divided. Yeah, a couple of them sounded like planning based more so than design. I don't care if the design review puts similar or whatever the case, but for me or for board members, and Peter, I think you must know that the ZBA ultimately reviews this and votes on it. We just provide recommendations. So um, it's up to the ZBA ultimately. Is that clear to you that that's the case? Uh, yes. Oh, okay, good. Yep. Um, did board members, so Amy put out a couple of different conditions. Are there any that we feel we would want to relay to the ZBA as something we talked about and thought would be good conditions? Oh, definitely the, you know, no turning left. And do we want to share some of the ones that we've already drafted as just like, you know. Yeah, the, yeah, the one from Zero Bartlett, definitely. I agree. Um, Showing my screen, I don't know if you can see it. Yep. So I just, I can pull them up if you guys. Sure. I, I actually did this exterior work only one, but we said we might do that going forward anyway. Okay, so the first, so two and three are from zero Bartlett and four is from zero Bartlett. Yep. Okay. Are these conditions we wanna to submit to the ZBA for consideration for this? Yes. I agree, yep. This is the current science, so I don't know if they're going to have to make up new signs because it just says Amazon. So it will have to probably say Amazon and FedEx. Yeah. I'm sure they could probably both work it out to say all. True. Yeah. And just right. have one sign. 
Yeah. And then 200, um, the, how does the board feel about the, so that does, so the, I do think it's good to point out the maintenance building. And as um, Peter mentioned, it does sound like they intend to only use it for their own vehicles anyway. Yeah, it can't hurt to put it in there. Agree. Okay. Was that in Amy from your? Yep. Okay. Any other thoughts from the board? Not for me. No. Okay. Um, okay. So Lori, in terms of drafting a memo, and Peter, thank you so much for coming in and answering these questions. And um, I don't know if any of these stand out to you. I think we talked through all of them. I don't know if you have any comments on any of them or anything you'd like to say or. Um, no, these these uh, conditions all seem pretty fair to me. Um, one question, though, on number four, because the lighting that we're talking about is these are existing poles and fixtures. I don't know if what was built, you know, 12 years ago is dark sky compliant right now. Um, is the board looking for FedEx to, you know, completely replace the fixture or is it um, asking FedEx to add shielding to the existing lights, light poles? I would say add shielding. Maybe Lori, you could word it like you did for the last decision. Yep. <clears throat> which was adding shielding. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's perfectly uh, I think that's a very reasonable request and I really don't see any pushback on that. Okay. Um so Lori, if Amy share this with you, is that a memo that you're you don't mind drafting, or do you want me to draft it? And no, I'll draft it. Okay. All right. Well, then, if there's no other conversation, um, anything else from the board? Nope. No. Okay. All right, um, Peter. I really appreciate it again. Thanks for um, coming and speaking to this application and answering all our questions. Okay. Thank you, board members, for your time. Have a good night. Okay. Thank Have you. a good night. Bye -bye. Thank you. Okay. Great. Um, Amy, thanks for prepping that. That made it super easy. Next on our agenda, we have consideration of minutes from March 7th. Did everyone get a chance to read the minutes from March 7th? Yes. Yes. Okay. There were a couple of um, amendments sent for consideration. Are there any other amendments for consideration? Or any discussion over the proposed amendments? No. no. Okay. Is there a motion to accept the minutes from March 7th as amended? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, Bill? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Amy? Aye. And it carries an aye. Um, so for next planning board meetings, it sounds like um, we're not going to meet May 16th. There's no, it sounded like um, Judy Barrett was okay coming in on the 6th, Lori. That was okay? Yes. Okay, so that means there's really no business for us on May 16th, so um, we will not be meeting on May 16th. Um, so we have June 6th and then June 20th. Um, I will tell you that um, I will be on vacation on July 18th. I don't know if at some point we want to talk about summer schedules. Um, we don't have to discuss that now, but that's just some, I don't know, as people think about their summer schedules, we may want to revisit what we do for the summer. And the first one's the 4th of July, so we won't hold it on the 4th. I wonder if we just do one on like the 11th and then will you be there on the 11th or no? No, I'm gonna be gone for two full weeks. Yeah, that's good. I will also just be returning from a two week vacation on the 10th. Oh, goodness. So there won't be any work happening. <laughs> so maybe offline, we could kind of think about our schedule. Well, I know we can't communicate offline, but at least share with Lori, maybe what our summer plans are, and then we can see. Sounds good. Sounds like it will probably be like July 25th. If we can, but like you said, we'll talk offline. Okay. Um, or we next could July altogether. <laughs> when's the cutoff for july anyway it's 30 days in advance so we um i believe i have zba on the 25th 
So by the time we meet on June 6, will we know whether we have July applications in? Um, yeah, we should know. I, okay. I should know if I'm going to be expecting one anyway at that point. Okay. Okay, so maybe at the next meeting, we'll know a little bit more. Um, next uh, master plan meeting, May 1st. Next EBA, May 23rd. And then there's a couple of things coming up here. Anything to say about master plan or ZBA meeting? Uh, of course, the second, uh, I sent out an email to all of you. Community meeting on downtown revitalization will be on May 11th. At 6 p.m., it's going to be 6 to 8 p.m. at the public library in the large conference room. So please drag along your uh, friends and family <laughs> and whoever else you think might be interested. We're hoping to get a really good crowd. Um, so the four redevelopment scenarios have been uh, created. And we're really interested in feedback on those scenarios. We want to make sure that we're headed in the right direction um, because the next phase after this community meeting is for them to refine the scenarios. So we want to we want to make sure we do it right. Okay. And then there's also going to be a presentation by RKG on uh, some of the market analysis that he's, uh, he's developed for the downtown. Okay. Um, okay, and then we have Metro West Collaborative Development Open House, May 3rd, tomorrow, 515 to 645 at the town office's gym. So that's the White Cliffs Mansion proposal. Um, so that's gonna be informal. So it's not gonna be a presentation. It's gonna be an opportunity for folks to come in meet the uh, developers, Metro West, also the architects that they're proposing to use, um, see the work that they've done and um, just kind of uh, get your, your questions answered. There are also going to be some folks from the White Cliffs Reuse Committee. So if people have questions uh, as to why they made the recommendation that they did, um, then they will be available to answer those questions. Great. And I believe um, Norm Corbin is going to be bringing some poster boards which show what the interior of the White Cliffs looks like for those who are not familiar. Nice. Um, I have one other question about 218 Green Street, who has to be on the agenda at some point, but Lori or Fred, Fred, you didn't think that was necessary. Are you just getting back to them on whether or not they, so Green Street, remember they came to us and they had some work to do on their road. And so Fred, do you think that's something that's just handled until it's per, until it's finished? Um, yes, um, I'm just uh, reaching out to the fire chief who's away this week um, to talk about the chip sill uh, coating on the top of that pavement. It was a decision in the common driveway special permit indicated that they had to adhere to letter drafted by the fire chief at the time, which called for chip seal or something else that would improve the traction because the driveway was rather steep. Um, so I want to find out if he still feels the same way. If there's a if there's a no opposition and they don't want to put on the chip seal, I'm OK with that. And I don't believe it requires a planning board action. Okay. Um, but I need I need some more time to kind of work through that. Okay, so we'll, so that's something, Lori or Fred, you'll get back to them, or should I get back to them? If you want, either one of us can do it. If you prefer to do it, that will certainly give you the information, so you can send a letter and reply. Either way, either Lori or I can respond and then make sure you're on there, so okay, they know great. we've we've gotten back to them. Okay, great. So as of now, it sounds like we do not need to plan on them being at the June sixth meeting, and unless. We hear otherwise. In my opinion, you don't. They don't need to come back. I think as long as they, what they were indicating in that email was they wanted to take out the base pavement, which is what we had, what I had recommended all along anyway. So I don't, I don't see it being necessary to come back to the board. Okay, great. Thank you for clarifying that. All right. Unless there is any other business to come before the board, is there a motion to adjourn? Or I have a quick, I have a quick thing. Um, 
it's for a question for Lori. Um, at design review, we saw 78 West Main Street and the design review committee wrote a letter to the planning board, but they're now, they're not coming in front of the planning board. So can you just forward that letter to the ZBA? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Um, if no other business then, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor of Bill? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Amy? Aye. And Carrie's an aye. Thanks everyone, have a great night. Thank you, good night. Bye. Good night.